Hello and welcome to Bunbury Church Online. Thank you to all those who've sent in messages saying how much they are enjoying these services. It is so lovely to hear from you. Wherever you are, whether you're on your own, self-isolating or with family, if you've been furloughed or you're a key worker, if you're watching this on the television or laptop or tablet or phone, I hope you know you are not alone. And by watching this short 30 minutes, you will experience something of God's great love for you and the whole world. This is the third Sunday now where we're using the Lord's Prayer as our theme. Today, we will be focusing on thy kingdom come. And so before we sing our opening hymn, here is a short video that builds on all that we've been reflecting on so far and inspires us to find new depths in the prayer that Jesus taught us. It's produced by Dr. Krish Kandia, who is the founder of Home for Good, a charity seeking to find a loving home for every child who needs one in the UK. I stood nervously in the courtroom, a beautiful two-year-old girl fidgeting in my arms. She munched raisins and played with the ribbons on her dress as I waited impatiently for the verdict. Her curly blonde hair blatantly betrayed the fact that she did not share my DNA. But that did not matter to the judge, as he decreed from that day onward she would share everything that my family stood for. The judge stamped the paperwork, adopted. And that was the day I became her father, forever. That was the day she took on my name, forever. We were ushering in a new phase of our family, together. When I read or say the Lord's Prayer, I notice the same connections. We pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We say, your kingdom come. I believe that as we understand our adoption into God's family, we unlock something, the mystery and the majesty of this prayer. Seven years after I adopted my daughter, I found myself once again waiting a verdict. Another child needed to be welcomed permanently into my family. This time it was a four-year-old boy who had had the most difficult of starts in life. As a result, he often used to hide in the furthest corners of the house. He avoided other people at all costs. He hardly spoke. One afternoon, he suddenly appeared in the kitchen, silently holding up to me a toy car with a broken wheel. I fixed it for him and off he went to hide again. A couple of minutes later he returned offering me the vehicle broken again. I fixed it again. And again. After 10 or 12 occasions a guest in my house got a little exasperated and suggested that I should throw the car away. With a tear in my eye I explained that this broken car might just be the best thing that he owned. It was bringing us together. It was forging communication between a doctor and a adoptee. It was enabling him to begin to trust me as a father desperate for him to know love and care. When we pray, thy kingdom come, when we pray for our family, friends and neighbours to come to know Jesus Christ, we're offering up our broken world for God to fix. And as we pray, we're learning to trust the Father who has adopted us. We're ushering in a new family future together. We're embarking on an adoption adventure that will change the world. So let's sing our first hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So we pause now to remember the ways in which our words, actions and thoughts have separated us from God and from each other. Let's say the following prayer together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for this fourth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, Teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that we may all be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now I'm delighted Alex Sanders is going to give today's reflection on the Lord's Prayer. Thy Kingdom Come. Hello. Here's my passport. Do you remember these? This document is very clear. First, it states that the Queen is in charge of this kingdom, the United Kingdom, and she asks others in charge to let us travel safely in their kingdoms. Secondly, we know where the kingdom is. It says it on the front. The UK is defined. It has edges, borders. And thirdly, it states that you or I are a citizen of the United Kingdom you have a number, you have a photo, everything. It's all in there. It's safe to say that we know about this kingdom. We know the Queen is in charge and she has a government and government departments and local government to make it all run. And we know where the United Kingdom is geographically. And we know that we are members of it. But what about God's kingdom, the kingdom of God? There it is in the first few lines of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. What do we understand about the kingdom of God? Let's take the passport test. We'll do the easiest question first. Who's in charge? Well, we know who's in charge. It's God. And we know that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to earth to tell us about his kingdom. Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And as Jesus talked and preached and traveled and attracted followers and performed miracles, it was perfectly clear that something was happening something quite astonishing, a different way of being, a way of relating to people that seem to have nothing to do with society's conventions, a way of being that challenged even the teachings of the religious authorities. Jesus called it the coming to earth of the kingdom of God. And he added, my kingdom is not of this world. The most helpful description of the kingdom of God that I've found describes the kingdom as where God is in charge. Where God is in charge. 
And this helps us with our second passport question. Where is the Kingdom of God? Well, we could have an intelligent guess at this one. It's where God is. Hmm. It's where he has always been, since the beginning of time and beyond. Where Jesus came from. And where God is now, today. And where he always will be, even after the end of the world. It's heaven, isn't it? Well, yes and no. God is in heaven but his kingdom is not restricted to heaven. Jesus tells us that it's breaking out on the earth too. Listen to what St Luke reports. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. It was among people then, when Jesus healed the sick, restored people who were rejected or shunned, showed love and compassion to strangers. It was there when his disciples and followers showed love and compassion, when strangers were welcomed, when the poor and the sick were cared for. It still is. The kingdom of God is where God is in charge. It's God's way of doing things. A different, better way of doing things. An upside down kingdom with no pomp or government departments, but one recognisable by its character. A place where kindness and love prevail. What a great place to live. And it can be found here on earth in places Today, it can be found in Bunbury. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote this. When we see social relationships controlled everywhere by the principles which Jesus illustrated in life, trust, love, mercy and altruism, then we shall know that the kingdom of God is here. We know that God is in charge of his kingdom and we know that this kingdom is being built on earth step by step as it is in heaven. We know that when Jesus taught us how to pray, the very first request we make is thy kingdom come, meaning help us God to help your kingdom come here on earth. Give us strength, guide us. All of which leaves just one question, one passport question for us. How do we know if we are members of this kingdom? We are all invited. There's no admission or passport fee. Whether we accept the challenge to let God be in charge, thy will be done, to shape our lives to bring about his kingdom, well, that's up to each one of us. Over to you. Thanks, Alex, for that brilliant message. Now from Musical Interlude, John Russ's anthem for the beauty of the earth, sung by King's College Choir, Cambridge. <laughs>
And now John Mason is going to lead us in our prayers. We thank you, God, that you are sovereign over all, that your kingdom is unlike those of our imperfect world, but that we can strive to make this world closer to that perfect one. Sovereign Lord, thy kingdom come. As we look around and see disruption, pain, loneliness and fear, we call out, where God are you? And we see you are all around. In neighbours looking out for those who are isolated and vulnerable, in doctors and nurses caring for those in hospitals, care homes and hospices, in shop workers, in delivery drivers, and in all those providing public services, in friends and families reaching out to support each other remotely, we see and we give thanks that love and hope can triumph over hate and despair. Sovereign Lord, thy kingdom come. We pray for the church and its ministry throughout the world as it seeks to preach the good news, to nurture disciples, to provide for practical human needs, to fight injustice, and to care for the environment and the earth's precious resources. Sovereign Lord, thy kingdom come. We pray for all clergy and lay ministers facing new challenges to reach out and support those in need. We pray especially for Tim at this time, and as we await the new bishop for all those ministering throughout our diocese. Sovereign Lord, thy kingdom come. We pray for all those who are sick, troubled, anxious, lonely, frightened or suffering in other ways. We pray for those with any physical or mental illness, not just COVID-19. And we look to a future kingdom foreseen in the book of Revelation, when God's dwelling place will be among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things will have passed away. Sovereign Lord, thy kingdom come. Finally, we pray for ourselves. Be with us in the days to come, and may our words and actions help to establish your kingdom here. And to finish a prayer often said in the evening, but apposite as we think of God's kingdom here. Support us, Lord, all the day long of this troubled life, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes. The busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, give us safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. This we ask through Christ our Saviour. Amen. Thank you, John, for those lovely prayers. Now, before our final hymn, there are a few more birthdays to celebrate this week. Congratulations to Mike Williams, who turned 73, to Phyllis Cowup, who turned 96, and to Eileen Overy, who also turned 96 this week, along with her granddaughter Rachel, who turned 21 on Saturday too. So from all of us, happy birthday, Mike, Phyllis, Eileen and Rachel. Let's sing our final hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.
And so a final Easter blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you the gates of eternal life. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has conquered death, give you joy as you share your Easter faith. And God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with new hope, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love today and forever. Amen. Stay safe, protect the NHS and save lives. And this week we leave you with the incredible Captain Tom Moore. Michael Ball and the NHS voices of Care Choir. You'll never walk alone. Blow your dreams.